Well, hopefully we can let you know a little bit more about Haiga Adventure today and maybe even get you interested in joining us. We meet on the third, thir third Tuesday of each month during the membership year, not in the summer though. And we'd love to, love to see you. You can just join us for a brief check. officially started in 1986, but met uh, um, for years previous to that in person uh, to paint together and share information. Um, and as you can see on the screen, in May of 2010, Sam Hamill, poet, uh, was the program for PSSA. And after that program, Fumiko Kimura and Vosky Sprague thought it would be a good idea to include Haiga in the options for PSSA members to have and enjoy. And so that group was, was founded and really got started going in um, 2011. Okay, and it, are there any questions <coughs> about that? So when we first started, we kind of uh, floundered around a bit about what exactly the haiku was that we were going to start adding to our pictures, paintings. And uh, we had various inputs from people. And one of the more important ones was um, Fumiko Komura, who had been writing haiku in Japanese since she was a little girl. And then um, Michael Dylan Welch, who is the power behind the Haiku Northwest uh, Getaway at Seabeck, which where we display every year, met with us, critiqued our haiku, and was a, a really big help with that. And then um, uh, also made it possible for us to display PSSA uh, Sumi paintings and our Haiga at the conference each year in October. So when you talk about us going to Seabeck, that's what we're talking about. So soon after that, um, we started uh, creating little booklets so that we had projects to do for our for our members when we were meeting in Fircrest and in. Um, 2020, Kathy Tashiro and Sally Penley led the creation of the first Haiga related publications. And then in 2022, Emily Kane and I created the first little uh, Tan Ringa chap, chap, chap book. I'm putting that here. The um, one of the main ones that Sally uh, was was really instrumental in getting published was our visions on the way home, which she'll talk about a little bit later on. And that is um, an example of the kinds of booklets that we were making before starting these, um, these chat books. So Emily and I did the first one of those. And then last year we had gifts of nature, which everybody got at, at the holiday time, either by mail or in person. And this year, we're going to have Mapping Moon Glow. Um, again, Sally did the cover for that one. And it's really, it's really beautiful. And you'll see some of the paintings today and the Haiga that people that, that are, will be in that chat book. Okay, this is the, the Tanranga Haiga cover from Emily and me. And that was... Uh, probably the first thing I want to talk to you about Haiga. So um, the haiku uh, format that we use is one line to uh, a, a number of lines, one line and typically three lines, but then there are other forms. And um, this 
Tanranga is the form that Emily and I used. So we had um, one person writes the three liner and the second person writes a two liner that goes along with it. And I'll just read this to you. I hope you can all see this okay. Over the pond, gossamer wings in cotillion swirl. A perigee moon hovers in twilight. So that was a, um, an image of dragonflies mating over a pond that we both used to write our uh, our parts of the two-part poem. And then uh, Gifts of Nature, that was our last year's poem. Uh, all of the artists on the left-hand side participated in that. E each one had a, a couple paintings and the, the haiku that they created from their paintings. On to the Haiga Adventure. The first, the first artist that we get to hear from is Jeannie Kimura Young. She's a new member um, as of 2023. And Jeannie, would you please talk about your Haiga? Oh, certainly. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, this Haiga came from a photo. Um, it's very highly experimental. I don't have a huge amount of um, experience in Sumi. But um, the image is based on a stray cat that sleeps on my patio bench. And at the end of last winter, uh, sometimes I would look out the window at night and see a dark outline of him there. Um, and uh, I've also seen the bright move, uh, moon out above on different nights. So I placed it lightly behind him as an abstract. And my focus was to essentially just capture the, his outline and essence uh, with um, a Sumi ink brush. And I managed to put in a few grays in afterwards. Um, now the face I had a lot of trouble with. So since I created that on a different piece of paper, uh, perhaps we'll have to call this a Sumi collage of a sort. Um, I'll, I'll read it real quick. Winter night sky, a bright halo ripples over the cat's fur. Uh, rather simple. My This was, I believe, my first, one of my first uh, haiku poems. So it's a bit literal um, as I learn things, but it is a finished piece, at least. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, and would you would all of the people that are going to present today read their poems twice because it keeps um it it takes a minute for us to catch catch on and then the second time it kind of sinks, it sinks in a little better. So could you read your poem again? Sure. Uh, winter night sky, a bright halo ripples over the cat's fur. Okay, and then I would like to comment on this. Uh, the poem does not specifically illustrate um, what's, what is in the picture. And that is one of the things that is really important in Haiga. The poem and the image need to be related, but, um, but not illustrated. If it's illustrated, then that's a, an illustrated haiku. Uh, th there's a difference that's made by some people uh, about that. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. I'll try to point out a few things that we that we do or that we consider when we're creating these haiga, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. And next is Kathy Tashiro. Kathy, with us today. Okay, sorry, I, I had I was muted. Okay, so my challenge with this, which is a collage, is how to bring the moon into it. The uh, part of our assignment about about writing about the moon was to do it without saying the moon. So this is a collage of things that you would pick up in fall. So with the waning, a phase has passed, a harvest of fallen treasures. With the waning, a phase has passed, a harvest of fallen treasures. And I want to say, when I was looking at 
the Im the image. And thinking about this, I was also thinking about Fumiko because I don't know if you've ever gone on walks with her, but she would always be stopping and picking up leaves and and various things that caught her eye. And it was just amazing to me how she could see something and see what it could be. And so in a way, there's a dual meaning here. There's the waning and phases of the moon, but also the passing of a great artist and mentor and, and person, but it's sort of hidden within there. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much. And um, I, and a note on that, um, when Fumiko, before Fumiko left us, uh, she had a period of time where she didn't paint anymore, but she every day she would make uh, make a trip out outside or almost every day and pick up uh, leaves like the ones in Kathy's collage and her daughter Jeannie uh, photographed those and sent the photographs to Haiga Adventure and so we made a we made a little gift for Fumiko by each writing a, a haiku that went with the images that Jeannie sent and uh, that was a, a really special thing for us to, for us to do, and I think that Fumiko liked that a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, um, part of part of the trying to put together something that is uh, related, uh, we sometimes can just use a shoto character or and this this character represents summer and you I put, I put that down at the bottom of this slide so you so you could see that uh and all of the things that you can think about in summer and the moon does some interesting things in summer so um stopping the car I grab my camera a rare beauty day moon Stopping the car, I grab my camera, a rare beauty, day, moon. And uh, this character is um, a more abstracted character in Shoto. Uh, I like to work with uh, the Sosho because it's more uh, fluid and um, expressive and maybe someday after I get to do this a little longer um, I will be able to make my own um, my own interpretation of the characters that we're learning in Lois's class and I urge everybody who has been thinking about taking a calligraphy Japanese calligraphy class to join us on the second Tuesdays of each month and Lois can deal with people that are both um, beginners and advanced. So um, hope to see some of you in class. Very, um, very nice poem and image from uh, Kudos from David Berger and Fumiko from Lisa Colby Anderson. Thank you, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, Emily Kane is one of the people that cannot be with us today. She had um, an, uh, an emergency to go to the hospital. So I told her I would read her poems for you and um, and tell you something about her. Emily is has been um, with, she's been with Haiga Adventure since the beginning and she's one of our more longtime members. She has been doing, um, Sumi painting uh, with us since 1995. She's taught Sumi classes mm -hmm. and uh, been really active in the in the organization. Although she's got some health um, issues and cannot come to be with us in person, so th uh, this is one of her Sumi paintings, along with the 
haiku poem. Moonlight floods over the bedspread, weight of a cat. Moonlight floods over the bedspread, weight of a cat. Now this is a traditional uh, three line haiku and uh, the, the image and the uh, haiku are related because Emily always sees the moon out her bedroom window, and and she, and she always and the cat enjoys the the moon with her. Okay, this is a second one. This one will be in the chap book, um, and it's the October moon, which again comes through her window, and I guess really a lot in October. So she was uh, prompted by that that ongoing light to write October moon, 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 go away. October moon, 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 go away. And that's from Emily and we wish that she'll, she gets well really soon. Next is Kathleen Tice. Kathleen is a new member also and uh, can you, are you here, Kathleen, today? Yes. Okay. So. Okay, thank you for inviting me. So um, last year, or maybe the year before, <laughs> during COVID, I took some Sumi classes from Henry Lee. Actually, he's a Chinese painter, but... Um, it's the same style, right? And so um, this was one of the poem or one of the paintings that we did in the class. And then I um, created a haiku. haiku and um, I actually have pink roses blooming in my backyard. And... Um, so I incorporated these together. Um, I'll read the poem. Spaces between leaves, the way of roses before the full moon. Spaces between leaves, the way of roses before the full moon. And uh, Pink roses represent grace and admiration. And roses also have an innate ability to create elegance. And they are a symbol of beauty. And then the full moon is like a pearl among those roses. And I know that... Um, this is more of a like telling, not just showing um, explanation for this, but I think it goes well together. And uh, I am grateful to Dorothy to invite me to join her um, her group, her Haiga Adventure group. Thank you, Kathleen. And um, let's see. I wanted I wanted to point something out about this. Um, also, it does have an element of illustration in it. However, it is focusing on the poem is focusing on the spaces between leaves, but the image is is a, a quite a comprehensive. Um, image of, of the whole kind of setup. So it's like saying that you're in a certain place to, as you write a haiku, but you're taking some element of it that is really specific and special to you. A thing that gets to your heart as a haiku moment, um, it's sometimes called. So um, that's one thing to think about if you're thinking about writing haiku and haven't done much of it before. 
really effective, Kathleen. Thank you. Kathleen also is a member of the Commencement Bay Haiku group that it, that um, Richard Tice, her, her husband, uh, moderates once a month. Um, again, if you're working, it's at five o'clock in the evening, so you could maybe join us there. And that's a really good place to learn about haiku, uh, to bring your work, whether it's a total beginner or you're really advanced or all levels there, and people help each other with uh, problems they're having writing the poems. And um, one of the rules of haiku is, in a group, is if you get help with your haiku, it's still haiku. It's still yours. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if other people have workshopped it a bit and given you some assistance. Okay. Lisa Sang. Lisa, are you here today? Dorothy, did you skip over David? It seems to me you showed his very quickly and then went on to Emily, and I'm just wondering if oh. maybe you accidentally missed him. Okay, thanks. Um, he's he is. Let's see. Um, he is later. I think well, maybe later, but I can back up if you think you saw him. Hang on. I learned how to do that thanks to Christelle. Nope. Seemed well, that it was there for a moment and then it was gone. Well, so my whole checking. program, my whole program was there for a moment this morning. And when I turned it on to uh, set it up there, there he is. So, uh, David, are you here to talk with us about your about your work? Uh, yeah. Did okay. we just skip over somebody? No, we didn't. I uh, Judy Kalen. Really? What is my computer doing here? Yeah, Judy is back there. Well, let me back up again. And Lisa saying also. Lisa, Kathleen, everybody's getting to see these more than one. Okay, Judy. Judy, there you are. Right after me. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, my Go goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um. This uh, this painting uh, I just did uh, as a result of I belong to this group on it's a closed group on um, Facebook and we get a new photo to um, uh, to paint from each week and believe me um, each week that that would put you up to about 52 paintings a year. So I've been doing this for many, it's kept me painting. I just love it. Anyway, with the help of Dorothy, thank you so much, Dorothy, um, a haiku. Uh, she put together a haiku for me. Um, anyway, here it is. Sorry to see summer blessings going and almost gone. Sorry to see summer blessings going and almost gone anyway this this is mine and that's that's how it was created thank oh, you i love the painting isn't that gorgeous Ooh. it's yeah. gorgeous and and judy uh sent the that painting by email and i just took the words from her email uh to do the haiku so it's like i was just uh saying earlier um if you have a little help with your haiku, it's still your haiku. And all of those words were in her email. I, I just took one word from <laughs> one part of it and, and stuck it in. But but the the thought and the and the words are all Judy's. So it's her poem. Okay. I love that yellow. It's that spot of yellow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. All right. Her neck, so we'll go through this again. <laughs> okay, okay, and I don't, I don't, let's see backspace. Okay, so Lee, is Lisa here? I can't see the. Um, I don't I think can't... Lisa is here, Dorothy. All right, Lisa. I don't think she is here. 
She is not here. Oh, no, she's not. Okay, well, Lisa's traveling, and she didn't think she would be here today, but I told her that um, I would read her poem, and uh, she she's a calligrapher, um, a major calligrapher, and uh, this the font that she is using may be a little difficult to read uh, on the screen, but it's really lovely and beautiful and really goes with the moon image. It's an Emily Dickinson poem that she added to her painting. And I'll just, I will just read that for you because it's very lovely. The moon will guide you through the night with her brightness, but she will always dwell in the darkness, the better to be seen. The moon will guide you through the night with her brightness, but she will always dwell in the darkness the better to be seen. And this um, piece will be in our chapbook this year. Uh, Lisa does really lovely work and we're glad to have her as part of our group, even though she can't be there very often. Okay, David, thank you for waiting. No worries, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy, for all your hard work on this. Camping in the mountains of Idaho, moonlight for dessert. Camping in the mountains of Idaho, moonlight for dessert. David, I love this. Um, I'm looking at your image here and, and with the pine needles coming out, you really got depth there. I don't know how you did that. A um, sense of depth. And foreground well, and background with, with the needles. Um, well, there's a, a wash to make the painting gray. And I used a resist to make the, the more white elements. Yeah, I was talking more about the actual uh, pine part in the foreground. Oh, To me, when I look at them within them, I can see like depth between them. And I don't know why that is, but I, it really is appealing. Uh, it's a beautiful painting. It is. Oh, thank you. There's um in the chat from Kathleen. David, I have fond memories of camping in northern Idaho. Thank you. <laughs> And Francis says, I love David's painting too, with all the grades of black and white. And I agree, you've got everything in there from the stars to the trees, to the up close pine needles. Yeah, I'm trying to remember some of those, that after it's like mostly done, then I do go back in with darker ink um, and add a few touch up thing so maybe that's why you see the depth in the pine needles some late additions that are darker very effective yeah there's some strokes that even look like lake water or river water yeah well yeah the white in the background uh, originally it was a creek or i mean reflecting the moonlight uh, and so it was sort of water and moonlight both in my imagination it is that painting on um sumi paper or watercolor paper it's on sumi paper it's about 14 inches square mm -hmm. well the background that uh con your control of the background is really really wonderful and it and it is set off by the foreground painting Beautiful, David. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I I do want to mention about David that um, at the beginning of this whole process, as he walked out the door of the meeting to go to something else he had to do, he just threw out, it would be really nice if we could do um, haiku that didn't have the word moon in it. <laughs> and so all of us have been struggling with that all summer to write haiku that's about the moon and the moonlight, but it doesn't have the word moon in it. And um, and he's uh, 
moonlight is a little different than moon. But okay. Yes, I'm a failure at my own project. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got lots of other ones besides the ones you're showing today. Oh, great. Fragrant Seaweed, Our Walk by Moonlight. Fragrant Seaweed, Our Walk by Moonlight. And this actually is a collage and it's on canvas. So I did a bunch of kind of painting uh, of ink and color on paper, which then I glued onto a canvas. Uh, I forget the size, but it's not super small. It's like 20 by 24 or something. And we made it square for this book digitally. And then I've also been doing some figure drawing. So I took one of the figure drawings that was charcoal on the brown paper and ripped it and glued it onto the paper that had already been glued onto the canvas. And then schmutzed a little more ink around and a few things to try and make it a little more integrated. Very nice. David has uh, has been showing a lot of the figure drawing, figure painting drawing collages at Seabec uh, in the last like three years, maybe David. Mm. Yeah, and and we look forward to seeing those because they're they're unique. Okay, Let's see, Celinda so is next. Can we get you by audio, Celinda? I think so. There. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm back speaking. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um I'll read the poem. This is my haiku because I'm going to refer to uh, the inspiration that goes back to 2010. But I'll read mine first. Night light sighting, forgotten toys left outside. Issa's daughter sighs. Night light sighting, forgotten toys left outside. Issa's daughter sighs. I would like to tell you about 2010 because this was the year that Sam Hamill uh, gave a presentation at PSSA and um, a poetry reading. And, co and coinciding with that, PSSA had an exhibit called, what was it? Haiku Masters Inspire Sumie. So Haiga dash Haiku Masters Inspire Sumie. And so the artists were asked to pick a haiku and then do a painting and this was the beginning of understanding the concept of haiga. So in this case, we just picked a haiku and then did a painting that reflected the haiku, but it wasn't sort of like connected, perhaps. I mean, it was connected, but it wasn't connected. <laughs> anyway, so the, paint, the haiku I picked um, still resonates with me. I, I can't believe it that I kind of, but the painting that is, that is shown here with my haiku is not the painting I showed at the Sam Piper Gallery. This uh, gallery was in Tacoma. I chose uh, Issa's face in the moon, face in the moon, ah, face in the spring moon, about 12 years old, I think. Face in the spring moon, about 12 years old, I think. It just brings tears to my eyes, I can't believe it. This Isa was a, it's obviously a very famous haiku poet and he had a terrifically difficult life and lost all of his children. He was especially fond of his daughter. And so the reference to about 12 years old, you see, I see him looking at the moon and he sees a face of a 12 year old girl, but his daughter had already died um, in infancy. 
so there's this time frame in which he's remembering her but it's long past the time that she was actually living so i wrote a note on the exhibit label if the beloved daughter had lived she would be 12 years old it's her face i see in the moon so my painting um sort of was a and so sort of like it sort of looked like emily's big circle but with a face in the middle when i do these projects i do many 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 paintings and i've kept them since 2010 and this one um popped out and i thought wow this is certainly a different feeling and i like the light and dark because what i'm responding to when I look outside at the full moon, oftentimes it's the sharp, dark and light contrast of light on the ground because there's trees and shrubs all around. I don't really see the moon, but I see the sharp, bright light on the ground. And that's when the image of the toys left outside came to me. And the sort of concert, look of concern on the little girl's face as she looks down from the moon or from within the moon or whatever. Um, I just decided to put those two together. The weird thing about this is I'm, I'm, I've been through a sort of a really interesting period of life and all things have sort of changed a lot. And when in looking at the moon through these past months, for the first time, probably about eight months ago, I actually saw a face in the moon. I mean, I heard people talking about seeing faces in the moon and all sorts of stuff. I mean, but I'd never actually seen a, a face until recently. Hmm. Anyway, so oftentimes now with full moons, I write a haiku and it's definitely a face. <laughs> So Amanda, that's, you, I think that's about face? all I can say. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you me. recognize the face? Uh, I, I recognize the emotions on the face. Mm. Uh, so, and I'm not sure. I think there's certain uh, positions of the moon when it's full. From where I look out in Tacoma, um, it seems like when the moon's rising, and I don't, I don't know enough about the relationships between the where the moon is and you know how it, how it affects the features you might see on the moon but it seems like at certain times especially if it's slightly oval then i can see big eyebrows and this <laughs> but the interesting thing is the atmosphere in the sky at the time will suggest things like tears in the face or a sort of a glow in the face and and then so I'm finding myself relating to it as if there were a face there. Beautiful. Um, in the chat box, Francis says, so that is the daughter's expression and not the doll. Sad story, but unique painting, Haiga, reminded me of a ghost at first. Mm. Mm. Yes. Very nice. Exactly. Great comment, Francis. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Celinda. And if any of you he here are new, are new um, and haven't seen our newsletter, or even if you have seen our newsletter and haven't always read every month, Celinda is the person who writes um, Sumi Insights. And she also is a... Uh, the closest thing we have to an archivist for um, Puget Sound Sumi artists since been since has been around since 1986, and um, is able to pull out all kinds of information and um, pictures and and so on from uh, things that she has uh, saved and collected and cataloged, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, no, enough so she can get it so a big thanks to Celinda she's one of the reasons that PSSA can do the things that it does 
And we have one more quick comment from Kathleen. I always see a rabbit in the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Solanda, very much. Beautiful. Okay. Next is Melinda Broadham. Melinda, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Oh, oh good. All right. Will you please <laughs> please tell us okay. about this beautiful painting and haiku? Oh, well, um, I'm like Celinda. I painted a lot of moons. I, I painted this painting a lot of different ways, and this is sort of this very simplified version of it, but I'm kind of um the old style haiku uh, writer and painter, I think I like to paint, I'd still like to include a season, have our seasonal reference. And um, even though this is not really Haiga, it's, it's a, it is ab abstract, but I still feel it captures um, the definition of Haiga, which is the essence of your haiku. And the haiku being an, um, <clears throat> an essence of your of the essence of a moment in nature. So I wrote this, um, and I like to write my haiku about something that really happened, happened one of a real actual moment in my life. So this happened actually a few years ago um, when on the, on the winter solstice, December 21st, uh, I could see, I looked out the window at night and it was snowing and I walked out into my courtyard and um, the snow was coming down and the moon was in the position like it is in my painting. It was a crescent moon kind of tipped up. And it, I immediately remembered an old Indian legend, all the old folklore lore of looking up in the sky that people used to do like um, and predicting weather, uh, looking at the stars and the moon and the sky. So like um, red sky at night, sailors delight, uh, red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Well, this this was, um, remind me of an old, uh, I think it was a Northwest Indian legend I used to read, you know, 50 years ago. And it was that the, the Indians thought it wouldn't rain the next day if the crescent moon was in a, in a bowl shape on the, on the lower part of the moon where it was like a bowl holding up the moisture that would mm. come as rain otherwise. And so I often think that when I look out at the moon and if I see it in that bowl position and it's up, I think, oh, okay, it's not gonna rain tomorrow. And um, I haven't really done that enough to know if it's really true. But when I went out and saw this, the moon like that and it's snowing and the moon in that crescent bowl position, bowl glowing up there, I thought of that legend. And um, I also thought how uh, the solstice is sort of a time of celebration for a lot of ancient cultures and how that it was just light snow coming down like confetti, like a, and it just, it was mm -hmm. very magical. and. So that's what my painting was about. And it was kind of, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I picked that particular image because the, the original ones I did most of had trees at the bottom that you could see the landscape. But I think it was, I edited it on my, you know, just real simple um, Android printing thing. And um, I took the trees out and just tried to really simplify it. And I, you know, I don't, I couldn't tell, I can't, it got so, I couldn't even tell what was the best. So I just put that one in, but, um, but anyway, that's what that one was about that kind of based on the old legend and, and an experience that really was special to me. It's really lovely. Yeah. As a package, the image and, and, and the haiku yeah. really it does. go together so well. It does really get the essence of of what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, it's helpful to to know. It's helpful to know the things that are uh, haiku moments, so to speak, for for, hands. for people. Um, and uh, Melinda does a really good job of pulling together uh, 
some part, something in nature that she experiences uh, to write a haiku and she can paint anything or collage anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, some, some people are a little, are more cerebral and some people really do a good job of uh, keeping with the original uh, idea of the haiku of having a season indicated in the in the haiga uh, either in the painting or the words or both so thank you melinda it's beautiful painting okay this one is a uh, a collaboration that's another thing that we do in Haiga Adventure, where one person does the painting and the other person does the haiku. And in this one, the, the haiku is by Muriel and um, the, uh, the painting is by Melinda. No, wrong. I got that backwards. The haiku, the haiku is, I did I get the words right? Um, the painting is by Melinda and the haiku. No. <laughs> it's by Muriel. Is that right? The, the painting's by Muriel and the high by, by you. By okay. me. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. There we go. You got it right up there, Dorothy. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. You, <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, uh, so which one of you like to, to talk first? Melinda, you're already uh, on. I'd so like right? to start. Okay, okay, Miriam. So this is a painting that I did many, many uh, spring summers ago uh, at the Senior Center in Lakewood. And uh, so it, it was actually in the middle of the day. And um, I was never really terribly satisfied with the painting. And so years later, um, Sally and, and Dorothy uh, had us all doing things on uh, square blocks, wood blocks. So I cut the painting apart and repurposed it um, on the wood block. And it was in my home when Melinda came for tea. And <laughs> She fell in love with it and actually resurrected the painting for me. So she went home with it. And from there, for her, it became a thing of beauty. And I must say that nowadays, when I look at this, it's uh, something of a thing of beauty too. And so here's how Melinda reacted. Well, I I just love this painting. I um the movement in it and the and I you know walking in the woods at night and being out there and um I I was so pleased that uh, Muriel gave me this painting. Um, I wanted to buy it from her. It was in our in the small works show that Sally had in her gallery um, down in Olympia. And I spotted it there and I was, you know, wanted to buy it from Muriel, but she graciously gave it to me. So, um, so here it is again, it's up in my uh, studio. All I see it all the time and I love it. So uh, the, oh, when I was thinking of a haiku for it, um, I thought of walking in the woods and I thought of in 1982 in Japan, um, some some group of people, it seemed like it was a, a, a government thing, but it they got together and decided that it was really good uh, to walk in the woods in the evening, that it was therapeutic, it was calming, um, relaxing, and that it was um, really a, a good method of, you know, it was meditative, um, and they called it Shinmen Yoku, and forest, which means forest bathing. And um, you can kind of just see in that image of forest bathing how it, when you're walking in the woods, especially if the moon was out, how it would wash over you and bathe you and, you know, just uh, transform. 
you. And um, so when I saw this painting, I thought, oh, that that reminded me of um, Shinrin Yoku, forest bathing. And so here's the haiku, forest bathing, the added temptation of moonlight. Uh, forest bathing, the added temptation of moonlight. So um, I wrote it quite a few different ways and um, Muriel picked out the best. So the one she thought was the best for it. Thank you, Melinda. That you, the two of you did a wonderful collaboration on this uh, piece and uh, it will be in the chat book. So be, be sure you look for it. It'll be there. It's gorgeous. The yeah. two together is very powerful, mm -hmm. even alone. Yeah. yeah. And it's, again, the, the haiku and the image complement each other. They make the essence of the whole experience, but they don't, but the haiku does not illustrate the painting. So that's, I, I'm saying that over and over again, in case some of you um, don't know what Haiga, Haiga is, uh, we're getting different versions of, of how we do things, how, you know, how we put things together today. And I hope that, uh, that it's useful for, for you with your work, artwork. I, I was going to add that, um, I was going to add that, that it's really fun to collaborate with somebody because when you talk with like with Muriel, um, I've collaborated with her before, and I always learn a lot from Muriel when we do it, and I learn a lot about her and get to know her better, and it's it's been really fun to do that with her, and and there, we've done that as a group where we 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 were matched up with somebody and we work together, and that's. So I've done it before with Muriel. So it, it was fun to do it again. Right. So, oh, uh, sorry. Go ahead. We just have something in the chat box. I apologize. Um, from Kathleen. I love that there are images of firs and deciduous trees in the moonlight. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's very effective. It brings the light uh, forward the deciduous trees that are lit up that brings the, the light in the painting forward thank you it, it looks so spontaneous you know uh very free and not like a lot of sumi paintings which are uh pretty stylized it just i just love the loved it that way yeah may i ask a quick question uh, sure muriel or for muriel is this a wash where you, like a David, where you started with the grays, let that dry, and then did the dark trees? Or did you do it all at once? Do you remember that? Can you unmute, Muriel? You're on, yeah. I can't hear you, Muriel. You're on mute. Uh, I, there we go. I said, there's a bit of collage on the bottom. Yeah, that's right. Actually, this, the uh, view out the window uh, at the senior center is of a, a lake which has been filling in uh, mm -hmm. and becoming more and more shallow. So, and actually more and more uh, swampy. <laughs> but so the the trees are reflected on the water surface, and uh, I, but I think the, I think I did the painting itself all at one time. Oh, okay. Um, although uh, I quite obviously did the gray before I did the uh, trees. Oh, okay. The gray above and the moon. Yeah, I think I may have started with that. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank and thanks for for the comments and and questions. Thanks for keeping us up to date on on those, Jeannie. Appreciate sure. that. 
and one quick chat, <laughs> sorry, um, from Marilyn Wait. Enjoying this and understanding more. Oh, good. good. That's what that's what we're hoping for. That you sort of get to meet the people that are that are doing this um, hike adventure. Maybe you know them from uh, just their SUMI work, or know them from some in person meeting. But um, we're we're really glad to get to do this for you. All right, next. Okay, this one is from Muriel. So keep your keep unmuted, Muriel, and tell us about this. Hi. Hi, Uh I think I'm unmuted now. You yes. yes, yes. Uh, so Dorothy had us doing this series and uh, for the most uh, of um, watching the moon uh, at its full uh, moment. And so this was a moment when I actually couldn't see the moon from my um, bedroom window, but I stepped out my I have a little uh, attached room to the bedroom and I stepped out that door and there was the moon high over my perennial garden. And this was in uh, March, I think. Anyhow, it was springtime and the Daphne bush was in full bloom. Um, since Daphne was one of my mother's favorite uh, flowers, um, and it was so brilliantly lit up by the moon. This was a special moment for me. And so the haiku is above the garden, right at zenith. Does it wake the Daphne? Above the garden, right at zenith. Does it wake the Daphne? Thank you, Muriel. And and again, Muriel was able to um, create an image of the moon without saying the word moon. So she gets extra points for doing that. Illustrates it well. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, um, <laughs> uh, I've, I've just got this interjected. There are going to be a couple slides from Sally, but... Uh, I just want to mention that in addition to the the kinds of techniques that you've seen and heard about today and uh, the the things that have inspired people to put words and images together, there are some other forms that you can use. Uh, there are haiku comics, etagami. Haiku comics are comics that are uh, written from from a haiku that you've written. So the inspiration is from your haiku and, and the form is comic and it could be done with sumi or it could be done with watercolor or it could be done with collage. But the main thing is that the, that the comic illustrates the haiku. I've been doing a lot of that and there'll be a couple of those in this next newsletter. Etagami, which is, um, uh, uh, appears a very casual way of doing uh, postcard sized uh, messages. And Sally probably has uh, some talking about that in her presentation right at, in the next next couple slides. And um, and Haiga postcards, which, which think about that for something, somebody that you want to send something to from a trip or that you care about. And for me, I care about everybody voting, whether they're red people or blue people or rainbow people. And so I made um, made this little uh, postcard that I, I have a big stack of to distribute. So if anybody needs vote cards, you can contact me. Okay, Sally, are you here? I am, I just unmuted. Okay. Um. I have done a series of, and I, I like to work on a large sheet of paper and I tape it off so that I end up after I have covered the paper with Sumi with these little vignettes, um, little Sumi vignettes and several of them because I was using toilet paper rolls. <laughs> um, so I had these natural little moons that were happening in a couple of them. So 
um, when we did this moon viewing project, I used a couple of those and um, then mounted them in different ways. But this was um, was one of them. And it it does sort of illustrate the haiku, um, but it's also sort of a standalone painting as well. So nighttime bluster, swing and sway, stayed moon. And my thinking there is, you know, no matter how blustery it is outside, um, when there's a beautiful full moon, the moon is is stayed. It uh, it doesn't move, and um, it's sort of that um, love lighting of that is um, just not going away. You said you uh, taped the paper off. I do. I take a, a full sheet of, um, and these were not done on um, rice paper. They were done on um, hot press watercolor paper, a full sheet. And then I tape um, my little vignettes. If I want two inch by two inch squares or three by five squares, I tape um, with a half inch tape so that when I cut down the middle of where that tape was, I have this little gutter usually of a quarter of an inch around the whole thing and it becomes you know a little unique painting and you you can't always plan for how well it's going to turn out you just have to hope for the best and um i get some lovely little vignettes out of this and sometimes they inspire a haiku for me by looking at the small painting so it's less about an observation that i've made outside um, but more um, being inspired by the small painting. Does that answer your question, David? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, because I was thinking taping on sumi paper, that I found that to be difficult. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, this was on watercolor paper. Yeah. And then, <laughs> of course, I need to make a comment about, about this uh, process also. Um, at our exhibits at Seabeck, we always have sumi paintings of one kind or another and the and the the uh, suggestion is for people to look at the art and write a haiku from the art and so that that's what S Sally indicated that she's doing with these little paintings and it is a, a really good way especially if you can't get out to nature, uh, get away from your home a lot um, to to continue uh, working with your painting and your art and then use that as a prompt for, for something that is already in your head uh, to write a poem, okay? Okay, okay and this one was... Um part of a series that I had done where I, I, I'd make ENSOs a lot when either I'm warming up or just feel like making ENSOs because they um, there's there's a calming effect as well as a, um, a way to prepare for um, making the brush do other things. And this was one, um, there was a, a full moon that was partially hidden and um, it, it looked to me like part of it was iced over. This was during the winter months. So, the, and this um, ENSO that I had done just seemed to answer to that. So it ended up full, but not quite. Icy winter moon, full, but not quite. Icy winter moon. So there you go. It looks like partial ice. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, simple, and but powerfully strong. Yes. Did you well, have? I find I find that um, some of the images that I create that are overly simple seem to be um, the most effective and the most powerful for some of the things I'm writing. I like simplicity. <laughs> I need to learn that. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you, Sally, very much. And sure. um, and and if you don't know it, you pro most of you probably do. But if you don't know it, uh, a lot of what Haiga Adventure is able to do is because of Sally. She has mentored mentored us for our paintings, and uh, mentored us by uh, creating the little booklets that we started off with that got us off the ground from uh, just meeting and talking. Um, so uh, we we owe a lot of thanks to Sally for for the existence and the and the growth of our little group. And we hope you'll join Thanks, us. But I'm inspired by everyone in the group. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to um, share the options on International Haiku Day. Uh, there are four of us were invited to participate in Washington's uh, efforts for International Haiku Day. It was a, a, a broadcast online. And Sally was one, Emily, David, and I were the other three. And Sally is going to show her presentation, which has lots of options for um, Haiga in, in the work that she's done. Okay. Um, okay. I and, will. Okay. And then this whole, um, this, we hope that I'm, I'm going to be gone now, but we hope that you've got to know Haiga Adventure a little bit better and the, the people that are in it and, um, and what we try to do. And, and Sally has got her presentation next. Okay, you place the current share. I'll pull it up here. Come on. I stopped my share, so. Okay, I did, there was that conflicting share, I think was the problem that. Yeah. Um, yes, so I'm. I'm the issue. Okay. Um, Christelle, can you spotlight me? Because yes. right now we've got Dorothy spotlighted. Um, is someone else is doing the chat now or am I continuing? Uh, I didn't make any I didn't make any uh, arrangements for anybody else except you, Jean. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you don't mind. No, no, that's fine. Just checking. But if you need to leave. Um, no. Okay. All, all's good. Thank you. All right. You're spotlighted. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Um, here we go. This was a presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, that Dorothy just told you that I gave to the International Haiku Day um, event in April. And uh, they wanted to see some of my haiku um, and Haiga work. So I put this little presentation together. It's a combination of um, work that I had done a while back when I was only doing 757 syllable haiku before I was part of the haiku adventure group. And um, so there's a combination of the old high school 757 um, haiku yeah. as well as um, some now that I'm a little more learned in this and have um, learned a lot from the Haiga Adventure Group. I offered this up, uh, many of you know me and know most of this, but um, I offered this that they knew from whence I've come. Um, <clears throat> and when I joined the Puget Sound Sumi artists and the fact that I um, have enjoyed writing haiku since high school in that 575 tradition, um, but now I'm now that I'm a member of this group, I'm um, better understanding the haiku structure and all the many forms that it takes, and I'm really enjoying it. And I particularly like um, incorporating humor and senryu forms into my haiku, and that means um, emotion-based, um, less about observations in nature and more about um, your personal observations and statements that you make about those observations. So here are some of my haiga. Um, and again, many of you have seen these before or some of these before, um, but this was for a group 
um, that was new and hadn't seen them before. Um, you think I don't hear. Yes, I do. I really do. Ha, 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 ha. That was written from my cat, Pippin, inspired by my cat, Pippin. Shock of red, unbelievable red, autumn. This was almost an accidental painting of a leaf. Um, I was doing some experimental work with washes and um, dropping color in, and this turned out to be just a lovely red leaf. And um, I turned it into a haiku about autumn. This one, autumn's effervescence bubbles up, then down. Autumn's effervescence bubbles up, then down. This one on the left was written um, at the beginning of the second year of, I wrote a lot during um, the pandemic, but this was at the beginning of the second year. Together yet alone, year two. Together yet alone, year two. There are a lot of these, so I think I'm going to read them once um, and I'll just go slowly enough that hopefully you can absorb them the first time around. Rhythmic moves in the soft wind, garden waltz. I like to do a simple uh, sumi with just a little bit of uh, for some of these. Up here, um, Mountains emerge from fog and mist, moles. I enjoyed that one. That was when we had a yard full of moles a couple of years ago. And this was done, the one down here in the lower right was done in the first week of um, when we were all sequestered in the pandemic in March of 2020. And my works became incredibly imminent and my on the walk, looking blossoms, looking for joy, peace, and hope. The virus threat. That was a good old five seven five. Roots firmly entrenched, stalks bending, not resisting. A beautiful dance. Now remember, I am a Western calligrapher, so. A lot of these have not on rice paper, um, many of them have, but a lot of them on um, hot press watercolor paper so that I could do the writing. Um, I do some brush writing on the uh, rice paper, but more often than not, I will use something that will take my pen and ink better than rice paper does. I'm still feeling this one in the, in the center here, internal strife, Wanting more, summer's end. On the right, spit and splatter as images emerge. Homo play. I'm talking more about that in November, uh, doing a presentation on Pomo, Splash Ink, that we first le learned from uh, Fumiko a few years ago. And then many of you know, I go to an art retreat every summer for a week. And on one particular day, actually it was over two days, I think, I took my little, and, um, my little ink brush pen and um, just did some observations and wrote a bunch of little haiku or turned out to be haiga because I added a little illustration to each. Bamboo Grove brings to mind scent of sumi. Blooming rose, a petal falls, tear of beauty. And for this one, I like to work, when I'm doing brush work, I like to work to Bela Fleck, um, a banjo artist. So that this was the result of that. The brush moves faster and faster banjo music. Morning, summer morning, sipping coffee, 
in a Christmas mug. At this retreat center, they have all these different mugs that they've collected from everywhere. And my favorite one was always a Christmas mug. Thai salad, too much work, dodging cilantro. <clears throat> Happy music breaks the silence, bird song. I love the sound of bird song in the morning. And then I've done some imagery for other people's haiku. This was um, a commission from somebody. Tree Mountain River, I go up, I go downstairs. Tree Mountain River. And then a couple of years ago at CBEC, um, Abigail Friedman was the guest speaker and she wrote some beautiful haiku. Uh, I illustrated a uh, number of her haiku and we did our little book and gave it to her um, as a gift for and a recognition for coming and speaking. And this one, I also turned those into um, some mobiles and was one of her haiku. August night, the porch light bulb still missing. And then, as mentioned, Edigami um, was introduced to Edigami when I first joined the Haiga Adventure Group, fell in love with it, and did a lot more research on it. And now I've taught it several times. But I love the idea of sending these posts um, with the haiku. This one in the up left <clears throat> is a 575. It was to um, my Western calligraphy mentor. Hand and brain well-owned, lessons learned with gratitude. T, extraordinaire. And this was done for a calligraphy friend. Upward and downward, rhythmic joy never, such lush fix ends. Again, those were five, five. And this April, two years ago, or it was a year ago, April, that we had everything from snow to um, bright snow. So drip, dry, snow, blow, four in one, April. And this was um, a little card that I made for my husband for Valentine's Day. Barking body parts, sweetly fading memories, lasting so deep. So you can see to bring and especially these edigami, um, it's very fun. And so it begins a crocus head, spring. And then I've made these little hand books with, um, I wrote a series of kitty haiku and canine haiku, and I bound those, to, printed them, and then bound them into the books um, for family and friends one Christmas. I also did a on uh, with Rumi, my favorite Rumi quotes, and one called the ABCs of aging gracefully. But I know these were specifically haiku or haiga, and they were very fun to do. I really enjoy those. Sally, before you go on, I just wanted to mm -hmm. mention in the chat, probably for your first slide, cat lovers will love that. All so pretty from Francis. <laughs> So it reminds me when you went on to another cat one to <laughs> get that. <laughs> and then, you know, we needed something to fill our time during um, the pandemic. And back when it was called, you know, the coronavirus, I wrote a series of, I think, 12 or 13 haiku. And they were all pretty kind of funny, like this one right here. COVID-19 quantity. Oh, what to wear to the mailbox. So I had a good time with those. And then I printed those two and colored them and then bound them into little books. And that's what I gave friends and family for Christmas in 2020. And I still love the old um, haiku matters and their writing. So Isa and, and um, all of these wonderful CQ songs and um, Shiki, 
And so I would find different haiku that um, were all sort of in the same category. This particular one was on bird, and I have done one for different seasons, too. I did a couple of them on autumn, where I just added the, um, the little simple uh, sumi painting to go with um, each of the master's haikus. Haiku, excuse me. Haiku is girl. But those were those were very fun to do. And here are those collaborative books that Dorothy mentioned. Uh, this was the first one that we did, um, which was a Tan Renga, where we had a three-line poem by the first person and a two-line poem answer to that by the second person. And we had um, what one, two, three. Three different, I guess. Well, there were eight of us that, or seven of us that participated in that. And then we bound them like this. They were accordion books and they were bound up like this. And um, and we shared those, I believe, a couple of years ago at um, the meetings. And this was the second one we did, Together Apart in Gardens. And again, it was a tanringa and um, a, a three-line poem followed by a two-line poem let me see if I can get in here. Um, this was David's White Lilacs and Tree Peonies, Busy in the Garden, followed by Dorothy's The, the Hummer Sips Dew from a Rhodey Leaf. Those are a little hard for me to read, so I'll I, I will spare you the rest of them. But they were they were fun to do. And then this was the one that um, we have just reprinted and um, will be able to share with you for a small donation. Um, but this was particularly an interesting um, exercise, in that, um, for example, this was. Um, Fumiko did the first one. White Lilia struck by the rainstorm collapsed. And then the next person, who was Melinda, had to take the last line of Fumiko's poem and start that with hers. Collapsed, orchard fence, delights a passing deer. And then Muriel took delights a deer tastes but lacking summer's sun leaves aside and then i took that leaves aside doused with flying droplets busy bird and kathy busy bird bath glowing wing spray rainbow sign to dorothy Rainbow sign set next to the fallen fence, something to consider. And from there, David took it, something to consider, red-winged blackbirds scurry home. The interesting thing is that in, in some cases, uh, a noun that ended a poem ended up being a verb in the next poem. So it's, it was um, really an interesting exercise, and I think we all agreed that we'd like to do more of those. They were fun. Now I've done a series of Sumi plaques, um, usually with old master's haiku, although I've done some of my own, where I took these um, rough handmade watercolor rounds and then did sort of essence of, um, image here, for example, and then these were um, down below pieces of calfskin vellum that held the uh, the various haiku. This particular one, mosquito in my ear, does it think I'm deaf? I love that one. <laughs> anyway, so this is sort of essence of that idea. Same thing here, I go, you stay, two autumns, and over in the left, winter garden, 
the moon thinner to a thread, insects singing. This, this was fun to be able to use a little asemic writing, which is um, calligraphic-like writing that you can't read, but this seemed perfect for the mosquito sound or the sound of the insects. And these were a couple of mine. Here's that, that same one again that I had in the, the initial slide. You think I don't hear. Yes, I do. I really do. Ha, ha, ha. And this one, early autumn mist steams my glasses, murky path ahead. And these were all mounted on cradled boards, which are open in the back. Um, so they're fairly lightweight. And then I've done a series of mobiles. I think I mentioned that I took my kitty haiku and the canine haiku and turned those into mobiles as well and gave those as gifts to dog lovers and cat lovers. And sometimes just a single piece into a mobile like this. And they're both sides so they can be hanging and turn around so that you can see both sides of them. I go through phases. This was my, my mobile phase of a couple of years ago. Pleated scrolls. These are wonderful because they close up over here lower left. You can see they're really compact when they're closed, um, but they open up to these lovely long scrolls. And this one in the uh, kind of in the middle here was in the first autumn of the pandemic in autumn of 2020. Enticing thoughts of autumn's past. What now? And I just did a simple little wash behind the, the words. And on the right, forgotten glow of the harvest moon, winter solstice. And I used pastel dust to give the this sort of fading harvest moon effect up at the top of that. But those are wonderful um, when they're hanging and you can stick them in an envelope and send them to people. So um, I did an awful lot of those. Um, that was my pleated scroll um, time when I, when I decided that uh, I just needed to do a whole bunch of those. This little one over here was for um, a woman who does some work for us and um, does does some work in the yard for us. And it's Weeds of Plenty, Rosie's Remedy, Dollar Tree Soap. <laughs> she likes to put Dollar Tree Soap on weeds and seems to think it kills them, but it's not very pretty. And that's it. That's more than enough. You can see more of my work at sallypenley.com or one dash sally dot dash penley dot pixels dot com um <clears throat> and um my classes that i teach are at sally dot com so you can check them out so thank there you, you go thank you very much sally wonderful sure. um yes sally christy <clears throat> says thank you dorothy and sally for presenting so many inspiring ideas and a few people had to leave early, Judy and Francis, but really enjoyed the program. Thank Great. you. Well, thank you, Dorothy, for putting it together. Yes, yeah. Dorothy. You are very welcome. A lot thank of work. Thank you so well. much. All. This was a fantastic presentation. I think, like Mehdi uh, said, we have a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, Never short of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> can I say something? Sure. When you guys came on board with this idea many years ago, it seemed like a, just a, a, a punch of energy came into the group. And you have continued that. And I'm so proud of you. And we are all grateful. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Trish. It's been a labor of love for sure. <laughs> well, that shows. <clears throat> thanks. And oh, Kathleen says, beautiful presentations. Thank you, Dorothy and Sally. Sure, you bet. I concur. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Again, I think I think we all owe a huge debt of gratitude to Dorothy because she's the one that has um, has really kept us going and um, 
comes up with all these chapbook ideas and um, it's been lovely. So thank you for all your efforts, Dorothy. You're thank you, welcome. Dorothy. Thank you, everybody. Dorothy. Thank you, everybody, for all that you do to make this work. <laughs> I really <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah.